Welcome to the Gospel Activist Podcast, Ministry of Stepping Out Ministries, where we explore how we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in our modern context. Here is your host, pastor and evangelist, Kevin Henry. Welcome to the Gospel Activist Podcast, and we thank you for joining us today on the podcast. Today I'm going to be sharing a couple of my own stories of witnessing experiences, I like to call them witness encounters, and we'll be looking at these two stories and as a means to encourage you to share your faith, whether it be to your friend or neighbor, a family member, or even a stranger you may come across in whatever context. And so, I really want to encourage you this day to be willing to share your gospel. It's not an always an easy thing to do, but yet God has called us to go out and share the gospel with all people. First story I want to share with you today is, I was talking to a teen one day. I had gone to the beach where, in the town that I was pastoring at the time, and I had gone to the boardwalk and... As was common for me to do every week or two, to go to the beach there and share the gospel. And while I was walking on the boardwalk, I was looking for someone to share the gospel with. It was a pretty busy day, and, but I was wanting to speak to whoever God was leading me to speak to. And I walked down the boardwalk and got to the end, and took a minute to stand and look upon the lake. And I took some time to pray. After I was done, I turned around and walked back along the boardwalk. And as I'm walking towards the beach area again, there's two teenagers, a boy and a girl. I I think they were brother and sister. And as I came up to them, God said, them. I came up to them and said, hi, good good day, and how are they doing? And and I said, can I ask you a question? And both seemed to be intrigued by being asked a question. So they, they said, yes. And so I said, would you think yourself to be a good person? While well, they both said, yeah, they're good people. So I said, can I ask you a few more questions to test that? They agreed to that, and so I asked them the first question. The first question was, have you ever lied? They both agreed that, yes, they had lied in the past. And I asked them, well, what do you call someone who's lied? Well, they answered by saying a liar. My next question I asked them was, have you ever stolen something? And you could tell that they're thinking for a moment, and they admitted that, yeah, yeah, they had stolen something. And so I asked them, what do you call a person who steals? Well, they answered and said, a thief. I asked them the next question, have you ever disobeyed your parents? That was a pretty easy one. And they said, yes, they had. And so I said, well, based on your answers, you're a liar, a thief, and rebellious against your parents. And someday you're going to have to stand before God. These questions are based on the Ten Commandments. So are you guilty or innocent of breaking God's law? Well, they were both a little bit nervous at this point, and they, they both said guilty. The girl became really uncomfortable, and she continue to walk on down the boardwalk, but the boy still stayed. And so I asked him the next question. He said, I asked him, well, if, if you're guilty, would you go to heaven or hell? Because we would be having a sentencing for, for breaking God's law. And he said, I, I, guess, I guess hell. And I said, does that concern you? And, and he indicated that it did. I said, there's good news, O still." Continue on by sharing how Jesus came and died on the cross. Shared how Romans 3.23, and I actually opened up my New Testament and had him read it, Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I can tell as he read those words, I could see that he was being convicted of his own sin. As we continued on, I shared with him Romans 6.23 and had him read that too and, and explained that verse to him. And again, I could see... The weight of his sin, his conscience, was bearing witness to his true state as a sinner. As we continued talking, the boy indicated to me that his grandfather had talked about this very thing with him before he had passed away. It is amazing how God does work. 
It's a stat that says that before a person comes to Christ, they'll hear the gospel eight times and be influenced by eight Christians. I don't know if I was number eight that day or not, whether more had shared or less. But here we already know that the grandfather had planted the seed of the gospel in this young boy. I continued on and shared how Jesus died on the cross for his, his sins. And that if he confesses his sins, he repents of his sins to Jesus and places faith in, in him that he could be saved and he will be saved of his sins and have an eternity in heaven where there's no more pain or suffering well, as I talked through this with this boy, it seemed like he wanted to respond to the gospel. So I gave him the invitation and said, would you like to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? And he indicated that he wanted to. So I said, the only thing you need to do is to pray to Jesus, talk to him like we're talking right now, and to tell him how sorry you are for your sins and, and to place your faith in him. And then let him lead you and guide you throughout life and, and be obedient to him. He wasn't quite sure how to pray, and so I prayed with him. And that day, in that moment, he became our brother in Christ. It is always an exciting thing to see someone come to Christ. To me, there's no greater joy and I've had a lot of great joys. I, I have three ch beautiful children that God has blessed me with. I have a beautiful wife. And I remember my wedding day very well being a great and joyous time. But it is an amazing thing to do the work God has called us to do. And for God to bless us by seeing someone come into faith. When I share the gospel with many people, most of them don't come to Christ in that moment. But as I've said before, our job is to communicate the gospel to people and it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. So we must be out there to plant the seed. Well, after we ended our conversation, I encouraged him to go to a church. I found out where he lived, uh, which community he lived in, and I, I said, hey, here's this church I know in your area. I encourage you to go there and, and have fellowship with other Christians because they can encourage you to grow in your faith. And so he took that and I gave him another track and it's very important when we share the gospel to do those things, give them resources to help them grow in their faith. Why, well, as you've been hearing this story, maybe you feel rising in you a wanting to share the gospel, but you don't know how to share the gospel. I invite you to go to our website, steppingoutministries.com, and on there you'll find some resources on how to share your faith as well. You'll find information regarding seminars we do or workshops we do from time to time for equipping people to share the gospel. And if you or your church doesn't know how to share the gospel or how to equip people, uh, we're willing to arrange a time to come and share this information and equip your church in evangelism. We'd like to encourage you to get equipped to share the gospel. Well, I have one other story I want to share with you today about my evangelism encounters. And this one comes out of a question that a friend of mine, Chad Eddy from Remember the Gospel, had asked. Uh, we talked in one podcast of what kind of fears keep us from sharing the gospel. And his question was, is the fear of man, could that be a reason why we don't share the gospel? And without a doubt, it is a reason that sometimes don't, people don't share the gospel. I remember the first time I went out to do cold contact evangelism. I was working in my office at the church I was working at to prepare a sermon. And God said to me, today is the day, go to the beach and share the gospel. Oh man, I was like, Lord, are you sure? Is that really you? But I obeyed and got up and started walking to the beach. I can feel my every nerve in my body just vibrating with anticipation, excitement, but also fear. Thoughts of, Lord, what if anyone I talk to wants to get violent with me or, or a shouting match? But nonetheless, I was obedient and went to the beach. And as I got there, a front of the lakefront is a sidewalk path. And along the sidewalk path is four benches. And when I got to this path, 
Right away, there's one man st- sitting there. And God spoke to me and said, Him. Well, I started walking towards him. The gentleman looked at me and saw me as well. And I said to him, Good morning. And he said, Good morning. And then I chickened out. I continued walking on further down and sat on the furthest bench from the gentleman. And I sat there and said, Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm so afraid. And I wrestled for the next 10 minutes with the Lord, talking, and at some point almost ready to get up to go and share the gospel, and other times I was, Lord, I can't do this. That was part of the problem. I was relying on my own strength. After about 10 minutes, out of the corner of my eye, I could see the man get up and start walking away from the beach. And I sat there dejected. And I said, Lord, forgive me for disobeying you. For not stepping out and sharing your gospel with this man. Lord, I pray that you would give me a second chance. As I asked him for the second chance, I wasn't necessarily thinking that I would be with the same man again, but that I would just have a second chance to share the gospel. I waited a little bit and I got up and decided to walk back to the church. And as I walked back to the church, there was a corner store there. And as I approached this corner store, suddenly around from the corner came this man again. And I said, Thank you, Lord for a second chance. I stopped the man and again said hello to him and he said hi back and said, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? And he agreed it was. And I said, hey, might I ask you a question? He seemed pretty intrigued and he said, sure. Are you a good person? He was a little bit stunned by the question and I wasn't quite sure why he was stunned by the question. Although I guess not every day someone gets asked if they're a good person or not. Not a typical question. Then I asked him, could I ask you for more questions to test that? Well, now he seemed a little bit nervous, but yet wondering where this was going. So he said, yes. So I asked him the first question. Have you ever told a lie? He hummed and hawed and said, "Mm, I'm not sure. As he thought a little bit longer, he said, yeah, yeah, I've lied. And I asked him the next question, well, have, what do you call someone who's told a lie? And he said, a liar. And I asked him the next question, and have you ever stolen anything? He said, no, I've never stolen anything. And then humorously I said to him, well, come on, you admitted to me that you're a liar. He began to laugh with me. It seemed to lighten the mood a little bit in this moment too. But he still said, no, I don't think I've stolen anything. I asked him the next question. I said, Jesus says in the New Testament that if you lust after a woman, you've committed adultery in your own heart. Have you ever done that? He paused for a moment. Then he said, well, actually, I'm gay. Immediately I thought, I said, Lord, of all the people to send me to share the gospel with, you had to send this person. (laughs) I didn't quite know how to respond at that point. And so I asked the Lord, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me what I need to say. So I asked him, let me rephrase the question then. Have you ever lusted after another person? He smiled and said, yes, he, he had done that. Now when he smiled, I started to get a little uncomfortable. But I decided to continue on. Because this person, too, he needs to hear the gospel. Just like I need the gospel, he needs the gospel, too. And so I continued on. So I said, based on your own admission, you're a liar and adulterer at heart. And God says in his word that if we have broken one of his laws, which these are based on his Ten Commandments, if we've broken one law, we're accountable for all of it. So according to this, Would you be innocent or guilty of breaking God's law? Well, he said, well, I'm I'm still a good person. And I said to him, well, maybe by your own standards, and maybe even by my my standards, you might be a good person, but it's God's standard that we have to be concerned about because it's his standard 
that shows whether we can go to heaven or not. So are you innocent or guilty? Again, he says, well, I, I'm still a good person. And I said, based on your own admission, you're, you're not, according to God's standard. So would you end up going to heaven or hell? At this point he says, well, I, I need to, to, to go. i, I got to get going. And I, I continued on with the thought. I said that your eternity would be in a place called hell then. And a real, the Bible describes it as a very awful place unimaginable pain and torment. I, I gotta go, he says again. I continued on. I said, but there's still good news. And he paused for a moment. I could see he was still anxious and wanting to go, but it's like he paused for a moment. There's good news. I said that Jesus came and died on the cross in our place. We deserve to die for our own sins, but Jesus took our place. He took our fine for us. So if we confess our sins and place our faith in Him, He will forgive our sins. And then we don't need to face eternity in hell anymore, but we can have an eternity in heaven with Him, free of all pain and suffering. He said again, well, I, I, I need to go. And as he started to walk away, I said, okay, but I encourage you to really think about what we've talked about now. As he left, I sort of walked back to the church and I was feeling dejected again. I said, Lord, what happened here? He didn't come to faith. It didn't seem like it made a difference at all. God impressed upon my heart, made me remember to look at his physical response. The word of the gospel was taking root in this man's heart. He was convicted of his sin. And so I began to pray for him that, that he would take those words to heart and come to faith in Jesus Christ. Even still now, whenever I think of this man, I, I take time to pray for him. We may not always lead someone to Christ, but we're commanded to go. As I said before, God calls us to proclaim the gospel. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. So we need to be faithful in sharing the gospel and overcome our fear of man. While sharing the gospel with this man, the fear of man was in me somewhat still. I didn't want to be rejected. I didn't want there to become a scene at all. But there wasn't a scene. In my experience, most of the times, people don't cause scenes as you share the gospel. There might be some who might be a little upset sometimes, but most of the time I don't see that kind of reaction. Most of the time I find people are very thankful for being given the message. They may not necessarily accept it, but usually go away saying, yeah, I will think about it. So I encourage you this day too, if you have the fear of man in you, and that's what's keeping you from sharing the gospel, I encourage you to conquer your fear and share the gospel. Remember, we're just called to communicate. And if they do reject us, they're actually not rejecting us, but they're rejecting Christ. Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron have a book on that very thing called Conquer Your Fear, Share Your Faith. I'd like to encourage you to even pick up that book and get equipped that way and take those steps and walk out on faith and present the gospel. You know, we, we know where people are going if they don't receive Christ. They're going to hell. And we know through scripture it's an awful place. So we need to be ready to go out and share the gospel. Even to those we don't like. Because really even our enemies, we shouldn't want them to go to hell. We should want them to find salvation and eternity. Well, thank you for joining us today again on the Gospel Activist Podcast. I'd like to invite you to join us next time as we discuss styles and modes of evangelism different ways to present the gospel in different contexts. I'd also like to invite you to visit us at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gospelactivist. For now, this is Pastor Kevin reminding you to preach the gospel to any person, anywhere, anytime, and no matter the cost. 
You have been listening to the Gospel Activist Podcast, a ministry of Stepping Out Ministries. To submit a question for Pastor Kevin to answer on the podcast, visit us at www.steppingoutministries.com slash podcast.html. Thank you for listening, and we invite you to join us for our next podcast.